There is that moment where as a brand new parent, you finally sit down on the couch early in the afternoon after a busy morning, and you've got brain fog, and your eyelids are heavy. They keep closing just for a second as you pop your head up. You are somewhat sleep deprived. And as you keep closing your eyes, you open them and all of a sudden you look down where you left your beautiful baby on the floor on a blanket and she's no longer there. And you turn around and all of a sudden, without any warning, she's on the other side of the room that she has started to crawl. And you panic a little bit because you know what happens next. All of a sudden, without any warning, she's going to pull up and start walking around the house. So you go out that afternoon and you fill up your buggy with every safety product on the market to baby-proof the house that you have outlet covers for every single room. You've got locks for the kitchen cabinets. You've got baby gates for all the stairs. You've got guards for all the sharp corners. You've got those things that go on the doorknobs. And then you install that toilet seat lock that you can't figure out how to open later. That the house is fully protected, even though it's no longer functional. <laughs> because when we care about someone, we want to remove every single threat or concern from out in front of them. But unfortunately, in this life, it is not as easy as baby-proofing the house. That as we go out into this world, there is a certain amount of inherent risk, particularly when we care about others. And the prophet Deborah knew full well about these inherent risks as she was offering leadership to the people of God during that time of the book of Judges where the people are surrounded by chaos, some of which was their own making, other aspects of it was not. There were internal concerns and external threats, and she, as a prophet and a judge, is offering leadership, wisdom, counsel, and advice. And one day, she assesses the threat of the Canaanites and calls for Barak to come see her. And he sends Barak to face this threat because King Jabin and the Canaanites have been oppressing the people for 20 years. And Barak agrees to go under one condition. He says to Deborah, I will go if you will go with us. And she did not shy away from this risk. Now, there are risks that we should avoid. We should not always confront the threat. But then there are other risks that we should embrace. Allowing ourselves to be vulnerable, asking for forgiveness, offering our assistance to those in need. And in that parable about the talents, where one person is given five, another two, another one, a talent is equal to 6,000 denarii, or what one person would make in wages over the course of 20 years. 
This is a large sum of money. So the amount of money is not the point. The amount is meant to grab our attention. So this person with five talents brings back five more. Because this person is trustworthy in a few things, they are given more. The person with two brings back two more talents. And because this person is trustworthy with a few things, they are given more. But then the third person is scared and afraid. So this person goes out to a remote location, digs a hole in the ground, and buries the talent. That the third person was scared and afraid because he assumed the master was harsh and cruel. So he didn't want to take the risk that he ascribed to the outlook of Jonathan Edwards who said, sinners in the hands of an angry God. But God is not harsh or cruel. As it says, God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. So there are risks that are worth taking, that we are invited to embrace. That this parable is not about amassing wealth. It's more like that scene from Mary Poppins at Fidelity Fiduciary Bank where Mr. Banks' son, Michael, has a few coins, and he wants to feed the birds. But his father, Mr. Banks, who works at the bank, thinks that this is frivolous. It is not prudent or wise or safe. He keeps telling his son, invest those coins in the bank where they are protected. But he refuses, causing a scene, even a run on the bank that Michael just wants to feed the birds to use what he has for something good. Faithful in a few things for the benefit of others. That there is this inherent risk within the love of God. That at Christmas, when Jesus is born, God takes a risk. When the love of God becomes flesh, it embraces all of this vulnerability. That every time that Jesus reaches out to care for someone, to listen to them, to offer compassion, he takes a risk. When he stands up in the synagogue and reads from the prophet Isaiah saying, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And then the people threaten to throw him off a cliff. He takes a risk. And as he's traveling to Jerusalem, telling the disciples about the suffering to come, despite their protest against it, He takes a risk. That there is some risk that is woven into God's love. And most of these risks come to us in small ways where we are invited to be faithful in a few things. That it's not laughing at the joke that is racist or prejudice or demeaning to women or someone who is gay. 
It is speaking up and being willing to say that we are sorry for what we did or did not do. It is shifting our plans and changing our schedule so that we can be present for a friend. That risk comes to us in countless ways. And we cannot take all of them. But we can take some of them. If you've ever watched over a group of children playing in the backyard and they discover that ditch that's off to the side of the house, most of us have said, just stay out of the ditch. But as soon as we go back inside and close the door behind us, we know what happens next. They're going to get into the ditch. And I remember playing with friends growing up and finding a ditch off to the side of the house. And we didn't want to get into trouble. We didn't want to get our clothes dirty and have to go home that way. We didn't want to sprain an ankle and miss our soccer game or dance recital that week. But at some point, we started to get awfully curious about what it would feel like to get a running start and leap into the air from one side of the ditch and land on the other. The love of God can make us curious about what it is like to leap into the air when it matters to see what love can do. Fostering community, offering reconciliation, providing hope. So we learn which risks to take and which ones to avoid and why to embrace certain risks, and why to avoid others, that we listen closely to the love of God as it goes before us and shows us the way. Amen.